Hello and welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into the weekly reading for the sign of Gemini. All right, Gemini, you're up. It's December 29th to January 4th reading. I'm going to get right into pulling out your three romance angel messages. And then we're going to go ahead and pull out your animal spirits and your traditional spread for the week. All right, guys. So let's just get right into it. Beautiful Gemini air sign and your first message is very soon clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now right energies are working in your favor past life relationship you have known each other before and separation time apart from your partner is on the horizon now, my weekly readings are general readings, but I do like to pull the Romance Angel messages just to give us an indication of what our deeper relationships may involve. And of course, these messages can often relate to relationships with family and friends and business as well. Very soon, past life relationship and separation. So we have three very different messages this week for Gemini. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, pull out your animal spirit so we can get a little bit deeper. And of course, we won't know what these messages really mean to you, Gemini, until we pull out your traditional forecast for the week. Now, energies, animal spirits can be energies uh, coming available to us. It can be personality traits, characteristics of individuals we may be dealing with. And it can also indicate certain stages in our life that we're entering into, right? So... Let's just see what animal spirits you may or may not be walking with this week. Just take what applies to you, Gemini, and let the rest go. We have the bee. <laughs> I saw the bee during the sh while I was shuffling, and I had a feeling he would pop out. The octopus. Water energy. Of course, bee energy is air. And then we have the deer. Sign and energy of new motherhood, right? So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and review these animal spirits before we get into your spread. The bee, of course, is air energy. And with the bee, we're talking about someone who's very, very hardworking, very creative, very sociable. The bee is this type of personality who really wants to make sure that everyone is being treated fairly. B energy is sort of representative of the, the great Democrat, right? Uh, why? They live in colonies, right? So in a lot of ways, the bee is, you know, the type of animal spirit that wants to see everyone shine, everyone feel valued, right? And like I said, they're extremely hardworking. So everyone loves to be around somebody who resonates with this energy. They're very, very good friends. This is also the mediator who will help people sort of get over issues or problems or talk about their differences, right? Because everyone loves to be around the bee energy. Now, octopus energy is water energy. And the octopus's tentacles get all caught up in affairs and businesses that it really doesn't have any business getting caught up in, right? Um, the octopus doesn't know any boundaries. Right, and so in this way, the octopus can be a real energy sucker when you come around someone who's like resonating with this energy, right? Uh, if you ever have a conversation with someone and when they, the conversation's over, perhaps they get up to leave or you've walked away, you just feel drained, octopus energy is at play, all right? And so here we're talking about the need to really <clears throat> set boundaries and enforce boundaries lest you get in messy, complicated relationships with people, right? Difficult relationships with people. Certainly when we see separation maybe on the cards, it could very well be that some octopus energy has been in play and it's time to sort of put everybody where they need to be in your life, right? Now, dear energy is earth energy and this is the great mother, right? The great animal spirit for mother. Dear energy talks about a gentle protection, a gentle but strong protective energy. The type of energy that New parents have, right? New mothers have loving but extremely fiercely protective and careful. The deer is also extremely aware and attentive, right? So we're talking about, you know, keeping your eyes open and keeping your ears open and being aware for any energies around you that may impact your family or yourself, right? And um, 
It can also indicate sometimes their energy, not only can it indicate new motherhood, a new, you know, a new motherhood specifically rather than a child being born, um, which is slightly different. Um, because motherhood can come in a number of ways. A child doesn't have to be born for you to become a new mother or have that energy, right? But we're talking about when anything new or creative has come into being or has been manifested, requiring this need for very strong feminine protective energy to be around to allow it to sort of develop, right? And so this can also apply to a creative endeavor, a relationship, you know, and it can also then uh, imply also motherhood, right? A baby coming into this world. So let's go ahead and pull out your forecast for the week, my lovely, lovely Gemini. I'm gonna pull out anywhere from four to six. Uh, three card spreads just to see what kind of events you may be coming across. And of course, these are different forecasts. So one forecast may resonate with one Gemini and another one may resonate with a completely different Gemini. That's fine. You may only resonate with a portion of one of these forecasts and that's all fine. So six of pentacles, <clears throat> seven of swords and page of swords. Wow. So six of pentacles talks about a real give and take. A real harmony that you have found with your finances, Gemini. It's a feeling of uh, finally getting at being at a point where you have enough money to be able to do the things you want to do. You know, in order to be able to give, right? In order to be able to help others financially, you also have to be at a certain financial status and level, right? You can't really be struggling yourself and then also... Uh, be able to have the funds to do what you want to do as far as charity work or humanitarian work. Because here we're talking about specifically giving of your wealth and abundance, right? Six of Pentacles also talks about the understanding that there's two sides to the coin. You have to really understand how to humble yourself and receive and also how to be willing to give when you have enough to give. And it's this kind of harmony with money and, and the material world um, that is balanced, right? We don't want to be miserly and greedy and selfish, but yet at the same time, we also need to be able to, to take care of ourselves and have a stable financial income for our families. And so the balance that he's holding there, the scale, is, is this constant balance of you know, how much you can give and how much you need to hold back for yourself. And so this is this energy that you're resonating with this week. Gemini, some of you may be dealing with the question of whether or not you should help a friend. It could be that um, somebody has come to you. They may need your assistance and you're trying to decide exactly how much you should give to help them so that it is a help and so that you are not sort of enabling them, right? But so that maybe you are indeed providing support. Um, and so Six of Pentacles can really talk about that. It can talk about coming to a decision or figuring out how much to actually give, right? But you come across the Seven of Swords, and it's interesting because it could very well be that somebody has come to you and asked for your financial assistance, but yet you're finding out this week that there's been some treachery involved. Seven of Swords talks about um, it's, it's, the, it's the card for futility and treachery, right? So it's like, when you don't put your best foot forward, you know, or when you are cutting corners, right? It's very much like the um, tortoise and the hare. You know, the tortoise and the hare, that story, you know, where the tortoise is methodically working towards the finish line. And the hare, because he thinks he is better than a tortoise, faster than a tortoise, and by virtue of that should automatically be the winner, he's very lazy. He doesn't put his effort in. He cuts corners. You know, uh, the famous part of the story is that he sleeps halfway through the race and then figures he, he's going to catch up at the last minute. But nothing that the hare does works. And ultimately, the tortoise wins the race because, um, you know, this, like I said, this is the card for futility. But futility happens when we don't really put real focus and intention on our efforts. When our efforts are half-hearted or when they come from a place of sort of underhanded tactics, stealing what you want rather than really working hard for it, then your actions are very, very futile. Now, this often can indicate somebody in your life, I'm going to say, who has perhaps been working 
behind the scenes against you, right? Oftentimes, Seven of Swords is the great dream thief, I call it, my dream thief card. This is a lot of times also someone who's close to you, but who really seeks to sabotage you a lot of times. So you may not be knowing it, right? So it's quite interesting. It could very well be that the same person who's been asking you for help has also had a very ulterior motive to why they're asking you for help or why or what they're also doing behind the scenes. So this is a real week of having to sort of figure out who your real friends are, figure out what people's real intentions are. And I think you find out about this, right? Because seven of Swords is the energy you come against. Could very well be that suddenly things aren't working out in a particular area. You don't really know why. You just realize there's every time you turn around, there's another obstacle to achieving what you really want to achieve, right? And I'm going to say for a lot of you, it could very well be somebody taking advantage of your hospitality, taking advantage of your charitable nature, but really in the end working to sort of bring you down and not really, really being very grateful for what you've given to them, right? You round off the week with a page of swords. And I think you find out what's going on and you decide to take a whole new leaf. You know, page of swords talks about a whole new way of going about your goals, going about your objective, talks about a new way of communicating as well. Um, it's almost as if you find out that this has been going on and you completely decide to shift the whole dynamic, right? You decide to suddenly not discuss certain things with this person anymore. You, you enforce boundaries like with octopus could very well be you've allowed somebody to get too close to you. And so you enforce, you know, you put your boundaries in place and you enforce them and it's a whole new way of communicating. And not only that page of swords talks about combating negative self doubt. So, you know, those ideas that, you know, the thoughts that we have in our head that can come up that tell us we're going to lose or fail or even uh, energies from outside that may come in and try to tell you that you're going to fail at something or that the way you're going about something is, is wrong or, you know, and in, not in a constructive way, but in just a very critical sort of trying to bring you down way, Page of Swords fights against that. If Page of Swords ignores that, it says, no, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead with my clear headedness, right? My clear plan. I know what I want to do. And it may seem a little rebellious to you, but I know what I want to do. And I know that I can get it done, right? It is of course air energy. So it definitely resonates with you, Gemini. And so this week, I think for a lot of you, it's a real wake up call to some of the communication and relationships you have with people that have really become out of balance, and they have really crossed a lot of boundaries with you. Indeed, separation may indeed be on the cards. Hermit energy. Ten of Wands. Nine of Wands. Now, Ten of Wands, Nine of Wands has come out again, uh, has come out in the same reading also, I believe it was for Aries. But the Hermit energy, of course, is a walking very solitary, walking a singular path, a spiritual sort of... Uh, spiritual, not even so much enlightenment. It is a sense of enlightenment, but really a, uh, a, a path of wanting to learn more about yourself spiritually, a path of wanting to be more focused on, uh, who you are and knowing yourself. Of course, Herbert is associated with Virgo energy, but that's neither here nor there, Gemini. This doesn't necessarily mean you're dealing with a Virgo at all. It just means that that's the energy that the hermit, hermit resonates with to a certain degree. But in any case, you're coming into this week very solitary, right? You've perhaps, uh, Gemini, been on your own for quite some time, some of you. And you come up against the Ten of Wands, which is quite interesting. Uh, these cards are almost reversed in the way. The Ten of Wands is what you come up against, but you know, you would have to go through a Nine of Wands before you get there. But Ten of Wands is when we're ready to lay down certain burdens, right? And I feel like what's happened is that through this walk, through this hermit walk and through the spiritual walk that some of you have done recently, you understand that there is a need to lay down burdens. However, you're not quite sure what they are just yet. What are these burdens? You know that you need a change, but you're still kind of investigating and figuring that out. By the end of the week, because of events that some of you may be going through, you begin to sort of take a step back. 
Right. It's almost like you're at this stage, but you don't have everything you need. So you have to step back to the previous stage, which is the nine of wands. And in the nine of wands, we really take a good hard look at ourselves, our attitudes, our behaviors, right? Um, our behavior patterns or modes of behaving that we've accepted in a way as a crutch to deal with certain situations and beginning to see them for what they are. Uh, these are all sort of little things that serve to alienate us from our true happiness, right? We may use them as a crutch in the short term because of fear, fear of being hurt perhaps, right? Um, just baggage you've accumulated maybe in past relationships that were difficult, right? But you have to see what these are before you can begin to lay them down and get rid of them. And so I think you realize this, Gemini, and for some of you, you do. You take a step back and you really begin to do that proper deep shadow work that you need to do so that you can redouble your efforts forward. And when you are at the Ten of Wands, you are actually ready to finally shed some of that baggage. Ace of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, and the Justice. So Ace of Pentacles is quite nice. Big opportunity in finance and career coming in. It feels like money is really definitely starting to come in. There's a golden opportunity being handed to you right now for a huge increase in abundance and blessings. Um, the aces are all essences of the suit. And so, again, you know, nothing happens just simply by itself. The universe doesn't just throw things in our lap, you know. Uh, we'll certainly not... Uh, blessings in our lap, right? Uh, these are things that we have worked towards, you know, to work, to co-create with, with the universe or with the spirit, we have to be part of that engagement. And so whenever we see an ace, there's a promise of all of that, that, that suit holds. There's a promise of everything a golden opportunity holds, but indeed you need to actually put your effort into it as well. And so seven of pentacles is interesting because this opportunity has come up, but you meet up against the seven of pentacles and you start to say, before you take this opportunity, this is very new, you're kind of reviewing and reevaluating where you're at now. You kind of take a look and say, well, this great opportunity has come in. So what do I do? Let me take a moment to take a look. Where am I? Where am I now in my career? Where am I now in my business? You know, where am I now? Are the fruits of my labor that I'm starting to be able to reap now, is this really what I wanted? You know, I've been working on this particular garden or this objective for quite some time. And now that it's bearing fruit, I'm starting to um, have perhaps doubts. Maybe this isn't what I truly want. And I think this is a general reevaluation because of this new opportunity that has come to you, which could very well be a whole new different career track or a whole new different way for your business to go. And so you're really trying to decide and a lot of it is reflective and trying to sort of uh, review where you're at now to decide if you should in fact take this opportunity and run with it or perhaps stay with what you're doing now. In any case, you round off the week with justice energy and justice is of course associated with Libra, your sister sign but it's also associated with bringing balance back into your life. And it could very well be that some part of your career or your financial area, your material side of your life is a little bit out of balance, right? Um, and perhaps you round off the week with this feeling of perhaps wanting to seek more balance in that area. This opportunity may be something that serves for that. Can also be, justice can also indicate an actual rendering or decision that you're waiting to come down, literally from a judge or a mediator, right? A court can definitely indicate official business happening, but happening for the purpose of realigning your life or realigning your career or bringing balance back into an area of your life that has been out of balance as well. And so it could very well be that right now, some of you Geminis, are waiting for this decision to come in because you know that uh, you're knowing that this is going to be a life changer, right? And so, in a lot of ways, I'm going to say, you know, perhaps wait, you know, wait until the, you know, until this week or perhaps even the next week is over before you make huge decisions. But in any case, right now, there is, for some of you, there is something out of balance, perhaps, in your career and your business. You're definitely feeling it. And this Ace of Pentacles could very well be exactly what you need to redress that balance. It could just be that you're missing a sense of creativity 
in your life, right? And in your career or business area, right? And that you want to be more creative with this part of your life. And so this Ace of Pentacles may be bringing that in for you. This is going to be the last one, the Emperor, Nine of Pentacles, and the Knight of Pentacles. Well, wow. Emperor energy is, of course, fiery energy. We're talking about the four major arcana. Emperor is all about power and stability, maintaining authority, right? Maintaining your dominance in a situation. Um, certainly building a strong power base to move forward from. And so right now, uh, Gemini, for some of you, this is definitely energy that you're resonating with, right? Now, the Nine of Pentacles is what you are met with this week. And it's, it's really interesting because Nine of Pentacles is certainly a feeling of rewards beginning to come in, right? Uh, but you're kind of sort of I'm going to really say for a lot of you, Geminis, this Nine of Pentacles, yes, it represents rewards coming in, but it can also represent alienation in a lot of ways, right? Sometimes our abundance level or our success, excuse me, our success level can serve to alienate us from closer relationships or deeper relationships, friendships, etc. You know, there is a sacrifice to be made for so much ambition. Nine of Pentacles is sort of the reward for a lot of hard work and ambition, right? But it is like the other cards and like the Hermit card, which showed up earlier, all the nines have a little bit of that Hermit energy within them, that feeling of being alone on this path, right? And um, I want to say that this Nine of Pentacles individual or energy may indeed be someone that's coming into you, someone that you're meeting up against because you're already resonating with Emperor energy this week, right? So Emperor energy is already stable, powerful, and has a command and authority, right? So I feel strongly for some of you, Geminis, it's like, in this area where you are already, your status is already a little bit elevated, you're coming up against somebody who's kind of like your Bonnie to Clyde, right? You know, your Bonnie and Clyde to each other, right? Um, and just as perhaps you may be in this higher position, but on your own, certainly, so this person that you're perhaps coming up against is resonating with the same energy. You round off the week, though, with a Knight of Pentacles, and it's this feeling, I want to say, that some of you have, of perhaps wanting to get closer to this Nine of Pentacles person, this person that you're running into this week, this energy that you're coming up against this week, and you're kind of making it your mission in a way, right? It's almost as if like, you know, if you meet somebody through work and you see this person, they're just like you, they're very ambitious and you're extreme, perhaps you want to get to know them more. And so you decide to take a certain strategy or go down a certain path or goal with your work and business that you know is going to bring you closer to them, right? And this is what I feel with this Knight of Pentacles. It's almost like you see this person perhaps even from a distance and by the end of it, you decide, oh, this is what I want, but I need to go about it this way, right? I need, you know, there's like a, a business move or a money move that needs to be made that's going to place you next to them, place you closer to them. It's quite interesting because this is all really on this realm of career and business. And you guys could really be dancing around each other, maybe even in the office or, or in wherever work environment you're at. But underneath of it, there is a desire to get closer. There is a desire to sort of come together with this person. Um, it's quite interesting, but certainly the Knight of Pentacles may be the slowest knight in the deck, but he is absolutely goal-oriented, and he won't stop until he reaches his goal. And so I feel strongly that this is indeed, yes, a, a financial career move, but what's driving it ultimately at the bottom is a, a desire for connection and love with somebody that you feel is really simpatico soul to you. All right, Gemini, this is your reading December 29th to January 4th. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to check out the link on your screen if you want to get a private reading or if you want to get a recorded tarot answer to one of your question, questions. Uh, follow any of those two links. But for right now, my lovely Geminis, have a wonderful, wonderful last week of 2019 and beginning week of 2020. Bye-bye now.